Man, give your worship team a hand this morning. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that is one of the best things about coming through the door here at Warrington. Boy, the worship team is unbelievable, man. I just, yeah. So I want you to know today I am fulfilling two bucket list items, okay? Two of them. First thing, I haven't preached in shorts since I was a youth pastor. Now, it took, it took a baptism to get us here, but as promised, shorts and cankles. <laughs> By the way, I found out what that means. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> the other bucket list item, of course, is cool weather in Missouri. We'll see how long that lasts. Okay, so, hey, super, super excited to have you here today on Baptism Sunday. How many of you guys, just by show of hands, get excited about baptism? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the idea, of, the idea of baptism for us is, and I'm going to talk about this this morning, but it really encapsulates the idea of being made new, okay? So I'm going to talk for a little while, not a full sermon, don't worry. I'm going to talk for a little while about what baptism is, what it is, why we do it, and, and then, you know, because it is kind of warm in here, sorry about that. Some kind of weird snafu with the AC, then we're going to get outside uh, while the cool weather lasts, okay? <laughs> uh, I think it's going to rain later. Hey, just, just a word about these Connect cards. If you're visiting and you would like info more information about the church, put your just give me an email address or a phone number or something. Love to reach out and touch base. Also, here on the back where there's prayer requests or questions, we take those really seriously here. So if something was lingering or you filled it out or you didn't fill it out and maybe wanted to or you didn't get a chance to turn it in, do me a favor. Fill that out and you can hand it to, to almost anybody on your way out the door. We'll make sure that it gets in the hands of the right people. Amen? Now, Baptism Sunday, this is something I've been looking forward to for, for a while. Uh, we got a couple other cool things coming up just so that you know that directly follow this particular Sunday. First, so on the 29th, we have our kids' ministry celebration service. Now, I'm going to tell you the construction project itself had to get pushed out a few weeks for a couple of reasons. But the cool thing is we still get, get this, kids up here performing and reading scripture next week. How's that? Ah, yeah? Yeah. I know you're tired of hearing from me already. I can tell. But the kids, we're going to line up. They're gonna, No amens. Thank you very much. <laughs> the kids are going to get up here and sing a couple of cute songs and, and do some scripture readings. And I, personally, I think you dress up little kids, you could literally put, they could read pages out of the phone book and we'll get excited about it, right? Yeah, moms, you'll want to have your cameras for that. Uh, that's going to be next week. we have a lot of fun. And then also on October the 6th, both our homecoming service for, uh, we have a, you know, possibly a couple of uh, new member candidates or those who are going to be reaffirming their membership. It's something that the Wesleyan Church wants done on an annual basis. And here's why that's important. Gone are the days where you can fill out, you know, your membership at a church and then never show up again and only come hang out on Easter and Christmas, right? To be a member of a church means I am an active, contributing part of the family of God. Not just in the big C church, but the little C church too. This is where I come and worship on a regular basis. This is my church family. Amen. How many of you guys know that's important? My kids wouldn't appreciate it. I know my wife wouldn't if I just kind of come and hang out maybe one or two days a month. Hey, I just figured I'd drop in, do some laundry, eat some dinner, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split, okay? Heard there was something fun happening here, but, you know, maybe I'll come back another time. That's not the way a family works, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me ask this side of the room. That's not the way a family works, right? Yeah, moms, how many of you know you wouldn't appreciate that? Yeah. Guys, I hope you're seeing how many hands are up. All right, so that's what's coming. So, Here's what we're going to talk about this morning. What is baptism? Why are we doing this? What is the big deal with baptism? I personally have never been to a baptism that didn't make my eyes water. Itching, of course. We're going to talk about crying. I've never been to a baptism that didn't touch me emotionally, even when I didn't know anybody there. We visited churches before where it was a baptism Sunday, and there's all kinds of people getting baptized. I don't know a soul. But I'm in the back bawling like a baby. There's something about it that is just unbelievable to watch. This is what we define. This is what baptism actually is. This is how we do. This is how we define it. It's an outward declaration of an inward decision to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? So when you make your decision to follow Jesus, really what you're saying is, you know, I, I want to become a disciple of Jesus. And it's this private moment that's between you and God. Sometimes people will stand up in a church service. Uh, my, my personal experience, I was face down, bawling my eyes out in the carpet. I got red rug burn on my forehead the night that I realized my life is a mess and I need Jesus. But then when did I get a chance to stand up and tell my church family that this private moment had happened? It was when I made the decision to get baptized in front of my church family. Yeah. 
It's a neat thing. It's an outward declaration. Literally what it is is saying, I have decided to follow Jesus and I want each and every person in the room to know this is the decision I've made and this is the direction that I'm going. Now some people that makes them nervous. Some people that makes them excited. Wherever you fall on the spectrum, baptism is exciting because it literally is saying, I have joined the family of God and, listen, I intend to act like it. I intend to act like it. You can count on me. I'm a part of the family. You can rely on me to be a part of the family of God. That means you're my brother, you're my sister, and here I am. It's a neat time. But this is exactly what we, how we define baptism. So <clears throat> I will say this before we go any further. If you were baptized maybe as, a, as an infant or as a child and you felt like, man, that, that wasn't really a decision that I got to make for myself. I know that was the case for my wife. A few years ago, she made the decision, hey, you know, I had been baptized as a, as, as a young child, and I've decided that this is something, I, you know, I want to make a decision here. I want to do this for myself. I actually got a chance to baptize her myself at our old church. It was the coolest night. It was a cool day. It really was. It was very surreal. It was very surreal. But it was a decision. We believe that baptism is a decision that someone makes. And so I throw this out here today. There, every time we do a baptism service, we always offer the opportunity. If God puts it on your heart, I got plenty of water in that pool. It ain't going nowhere. Okay? We always open the door for that. If God tugs your heart and says, hey, this is a decision I want you to make for yourself, and you feel the time is right, we got plenty of room. And I believe my wife thought I hadn't brought extra towels, just in case. That could have been for me, though. I'm kind of messy. So, here's what it represents, though. This is where we really get to the heart of it. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, when we talk about what is baptism, what it really represents, why we do it, and I'm going to read this to you. Now, this is the Apostle Paul writing. He says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have, listen, taken your stand. How many of you know that your faith must be an active one, right? You don't get to say, oh, I'm a Christian, as long as it doesn't embarrass me in front of other people. I don't want to, you know, throw out a, a quick drive-by prayer before I make decisions in my life. Or, or as my pastor used to put it, make a decision and then try and sprinkle a little Jesus on top, right? Oh, I'm blessed everywhere I go. God is, God is with me. Well, m- maybe not. Have you checked? It says, on which you've taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. Listen, here's a big word here, okay? If, all right, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. What does that mean? Does that mean that we can work for our salvation? Absolutely not. But what it is saying is that if you call yourself a child of God, you got to act like it. If you call yourself a part of the family of God, you got to be there. If you say that you're a disciple of Christ, are you bearing fruit that looks like that? Now, we're not talking about walking perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. Yesterday was my biggest, I just felt like it was my dad fail moment of the month, okay? All the way around, it just was a yucky day. We don't need perfect, but we need to be honest. He says, otherwise you've believed in vain. But listen to this. For I, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. In other words, this is priority. Listen to this and know this. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried, he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Amen? It's about baptism represents, Right? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about that. But that's what baptism is. This is well, that's why it's such a big deal. We identify with Jesus Christ by way of identifying with him through baptism. It's that outward declaration of the inward decision that we've made. It says that Jesus was crucified. He was died for our sins. He was buried. Then he resurrected. Notice the theme here, right? When we baptize, we hold someone. And we say, okay, you're going under, right? Some of you need to go down a little longer than others, all right? You're going down. And then we lower you into the water and we pause for just a brief second. Some of you, it's not so brief. That's the death. That's the burial. Resurrection is coming back up. That's our identification with Jesus Christ. It says that he was, he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So that's what it is. That's how we... That's how we identify with it. That, and that identification is probably the most important thing. That's what we do when we're baptized. We identify with Jesus Christ. That's what baptism is. 
Why? Why are we baptized? Some people say, well, I don't, need, I don't need to be baptized to be saved. No, that's true. You don't. It's the blood of Jesus and nothing else that saves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You just have some church. You know, I'm preaching better than some of you are letting on. If not, okay, let me, let me just concentrate my, my efforts over here. It's the, go- the gospel is that Jesus Christ died to save us from our sins, from the penalty of sin to restore relationship with the Father. Amen? So it's not baptism that saves us. However, there are a couple of direct commands in Scripture, and this is what the Word says. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. This is from the Great Commission. He says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There's that word baptizing, right? And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. There is a process in the church. Now, the blood of Christ is what saves us. Baptism, though, is a response, an obedient response to a command of Scripture. Some people say, well, you know, I'm I'm not ready yet. You know, back in those days, when did you get baptized? When you got saved. There's a proper order. Nowadays, especially in Western culture, right, we want to make a moment. Now, we do this because it's what families want. You know, it gives people a chance to, to attend and to visit, and it's an event for some. But I could just as easily, I've done it in people's houses. I've done it in swimming pools. I'll come to your bathtub. I don't care. I'll bring, a re- I'll bring one of those five-gallon jugs of water and just dump it over you. I don't care where we baptize or how it gets done. It's a command in Scripture. Acts 2.37 repent. This is, this is Peter. After he says, you killed Jesus Christ who was prophesied in scripture. Your savior came to you and you killed him. And they, this is that they were cut to the heart and they said, what do we do? What are we supposed to do? He says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the apostle Peter saying, repent and be baptized. Repent. Make that declaration, right? It says in, in the book of Romans, we confess with our mouth that Jesus is and believe in our heart that God raised him from, then we will be all right. About half of you were with me, and I really appreciate that, okay? But check it out. That's, what we, that's, that's the inward decision. We confess, with him, we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. That's the first part of it, right? But he also says that we, go, we, we, we are to be baptized as well because we make the decision internally. We demonstrate it externally, right? Repent and be baptized. And then... I, I think one example that is, is sometimes overlooked, but it's really important. This is in Matthew 3, verses 3 through 15, uh, 13 through 15. It says, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. He said, I'm the one that needs to be baptized by you. By you. Why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, It should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Jesus himself went to be baptized. Now that, to me, is an example worth following. Amen? Amen. Jesus himself said, no, this is all that God requires. That's why we're going to do it. Well, I guess if that's what God requires, that's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. So that's, that's why. Now, let's get to another question I think that is sometimes disputed. How? How are we biblically supposed to be baptized? Well, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so I went to, like, the Greek, right? I just wanted to make sure I understood so that I can explain. I'm not going to give, you know, a a Greek lesson here. But here's what I'll say. The actual word, you know, when we talk about to baptize or to be baptized or baptizing, right? That word baptizo, right, means to dip repeatedly. Repeatedly, see, God already knew some of you. To dip repeatedly, to immerse, to submerge, or to cleanse by dipping or submerging, to wash, to make clean with water, to wash oneself. So that, when we talk about scriptural baptism, and, and the, in the original, I'm going to just go back here real quick. These scriptural examples where he says, uh, therefore go and make disciples, baptizing them. He says, repent and be baptized. That word there that he's talking about is this form of baptism, being submerged. If for some reason you've been baptized, you know, they sprinkled you or you weren't submerged, I'm not saying that your your heart wasn't right. I'm not saying that maybe you necessarily did anything wrong. But according to Scripture, the way that they the way that God says to be baptized is to be submerged because again, we're identifying with the death, the burial, right? The burial and the resurrection. 
The cornerstone of the gospel is that Jesus is who he said he was, and he did what he said he'd do, right? Who else do you know that goes into the ground and raises himself from the dead who lives and substantiates by the power of his own name? The world is because I am. You're saved because I am. Everything you'll ever be and ever hope for rests in the hope of the gospel, which is in Jesus Christ. Amen? And it all is substantiated by the fact that God raised him from the dead. That's why going under and then coming back up is so important. It's symbolic of the, (laughs) call it the gear that makes the whole thing turn. Anybody can claim to be Savior. Anybody can be martyred. They can be executed. They can be crucified. Anybody can be put in the ground. Who is coming back? Who's coming back? Only Jesus. And this is where, again, where we talk about, you know, baby or or infant baptism or child baptism. This is why it's so important that we say that, that, that it's a choice that needs to be made for you to decide for yourself. Because it's... it. it in the book of Revelation, it says we overcome the, the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony, right? It's not your testimony if it wasn't your decision. It's not of any significance if it wasn't a decision that you made for yourself, right? Someone comes to you and says, you know, I really needed to take a stand for God, so I quit my job today. Huh. Well, what actually happened is that you were a jerk at work and you got fired, No, 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 no. It's because I refuse to work on Sunday. No, it's because you refuse to work. (laughs) There's a big difference between that which is forced on you and that which you decide for yourself, right? Any, any, uh, Any dieters in the room? Clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about, right? No, really, like if you wake up one day and go, hey, I'm down a pound. That's amazing. I had chicken wings for dinner. I wonder what happened. Doesn't mean near as much. Ask somebody who's been, who's been dieting, if you will, for, for three months, right? who's been hangry for 90 days. I'm not looking at anybody in particular. Right? Does that mean a little bit more to somebody who's, who's, who's made that decision and stuck to it through, oh, man, I was over at the, you know, like our, like our house, that giant football party that we did with all that food. There was more food than I knew what to do. I couldn't even look at it all. Right? My wife said, nope, nope, nope. I was, like, amazed. I'm like, surely this is the time to cheat. Nope. I'm sticking to it. She was grumpy, but she did it. It means more when it's a decision that you make for yourself because that is the power of our testimony. Testimony contains the word test, right? You don't have a testimony if you haven't been tested. You can't have a message if you're still stuck in the mess, right? you got to decide for yourself. And I don't, I don't want to beat that drum too much, but that's why choosing our, you know, for ourselves in baptism is so important. And ultimately, we come to the idea of being made new. This is why it's so important to be made new. Listen to this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read out of Colossians chapter 2. All right? When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were baptized with Christ, uh, excuse me, you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Now listen, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not cut away, okay? This is on us, this starts with us. But listen, then God made you alive with Christ and he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. We celebrate baptism. Baptism is such a big deal because we have been made new, right? 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, it's a real familiar scripture. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Now, here's what it says. It says that the old has gone and the new has come. But yet we still find ourselves struggling, dealing with all kinds of junk, all kinds of mess, right? In the book of Galatians, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has already, it says, set us free. Stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Do you know that we have a tendency to go back to the thing that we came from? Anybody who's ever been in recovery in a 12-step program understands 
the, the, the value of consistency, of putting one foot in front of another, one day in front of another day, in front of another day, and you work for it one day at a time, right? Now, our salvation is not something that we can work for, but our, our, our discipleship process, our journey is a day by day by day, amen? Now, it's just that you've been made new. God has given you all that you need, all the spiritual tools, all the equipment, all the whatever that you need to be free, to walk in freedom, which is a decision that you have to make for yourself on a daily basis. That's why he says in Luke 9, 23, if anyone would follow me, he must pick up his cross and follow me daily. Take up his cross daily. It's a daily thing. Why do we celebrate baptism? Because it's a public declaration that here we go. Now my journey starts. You may have already made the decision in your heart to be saved or to, to allow God to, to, to redeem you, but today starts my public journey, the walk that I'm willing to take. Amen? Now, how many of you are ex so excited for those getting baptized today? Yeah, yeah, me too. To be made new in Christ. And, that, and that's the whole idea is that we are, we are made new. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray, okay? And then we're going to take five or six minutes to slowly migrate out. So we've got a couple of, couple of things to put together. I gotta, I'm not putting my Nikes in the pool, that's for sure. I'm going to change my shoes. We're all going to go get ready. Do whatever you, if you're getting baptized, you're going to do whatever you do to go get ready. Kids, talk to your parents. Kevin. He's the, he's the only grown-up today, I think. <laughs> That's a man right there. That's a man right there. That's a guy who says, you know what, I don't care. Yeah, give him a hand. Hey. Do you know what kind of courage it takes to get to a certain point in your life and say, I don't care what's come before. I can only tell you what comes next. I don't know. I don't care where I've been. I know where I'm going, though, and Jesus is going to lead me every step of the way. And I'm starting to figure out something that my mom told me when I was much younger. She used to say, when you, she said, the older you get, the harder it is to start new, to make new decisions, to do new things. And I used to think, Mom, you're crazy. I used to think she was crazy when she told me she was tired all the time. I get it now. Good on you, man. So let's pray, and then we're all going to exit the building. We're going to go gather. It's not raining yet, right? Yeah, at the moment, yeah, we'll see. We're going to take a few minutes to go outside and congregate, get ready, and then we'll get started. Jesus, we're thankful for all that you do in this place, God. You have given us reason to celebrate today. We are excited, God. In all things, God, I always pray, would you give us eyes to see ears to hear, hearts willing and open to receive Jesus right now specifically. I pray for those as we prepare, as we prepare to, to, to baptize, as we prepare for that today. Would you give us eyes to see the beauty of being made new in you, Jesus? It's the gospel that makes us new. It's, it's your blood that washes us clean. Would you give us ears to hear, Lord? We've heard truth so many times that maybe hasn't changed us, hasn't impacted us. Would today be an opportunity to hear that new truth? And God, ultimately, as always, hearts willing and open to receive all that you have for us, God. We celebrate and publicly acknowledge their decision to follow you in baptism today. And Lord, if you tug on the heart of anyone else today, if the time is right, would you make it known to them as well? God, we thank you for all that you do. We're excited to celebrate with you today. In Jesus' precious name, all the church said, amen. All right, I'll see you outside in just a couple of minutes.